let's discuss the tests used to diagnose COVID-19. There are two main types of tests, diagnostic tests and antibody tests. Diagnostic tests are used to determine if you have an active infection. These include the PCR molecular tests and the antigen tests, which are most likely to be positive during the first week of symptoms. We'll discuss these in more detail shortly. Antibody tests determine if you have had an infection in the past. Antibody tests generally become positive starting at about two weeks after onset of symptoms, and it's not known currently how long the antibodies will actually persist. Two different antibodies can be tested, IgM and IgG. The IgM response occurs earlier and the IgG response lasts longer. In this diagram, you can see that between week one and two, the PCR is likely to be positive. You see that horizontal bar towards the top. The PCR is going to be likely negative several weeks thereafter, but that's when the antibody tests are more likely to be positive and the antibody levels will go up and then the IgG level will persist longer. So let's compare the types of tests. The diagnostic tests generally use a nasal swab and they show if you have an active infection. They are, as we said, most accurate during the first week of symptoms. So the diagnostic tests that are called PCR, they detect the virus's genetic material and they are extremely sensitive, maybe too sensitive as we'll discuss shortly. The antigen tests detect a specific protein from the virus. These tests also rely on a swab, a nasal swab or a throat swab. Okay, uh, Some tests are being developed to use saliva. In general, the antigen tests are much faster and much cheaper than the PCR testing. They are highly specific. That means they will not have very many false positive rates, but they can be less sensitive than PCR testing. The antibody tests are not done on the basis of a swab. They actually are done on the basis of, uh, of your blood, and they look for antibodies that are present in the blood. These antibodies were made by your immune system in response to a specific virus or other, other uh, disease-causing uh, germ, if you would. Antibodies take days to weeks to develop, as we said, and they can persist for months or longer. They determine if you've had an infection in the past. They're not used to diagnose an active infection. Now, there are some other things available with testing, and of course, uh, testing is evolving rapidly as well. Testing can be done at the point of care, so that means at the doctor's office or in the urgent care, testing can actually happen there. Combination tests are available that will test not just for COVID-19, but for other viruses as well. At-home collection options are also starting to become available. Saliva testing to keep from the poking the patients deeply in the nose uh, are also being developed. So now let's talk more in detail about the PCR tests, which, as we said, detect the virus's genetic material. They're highly sensitive, meaning they have a very low false negative rate. They won't miss anybody. But what about the false positives? That's what we want to discuss more. Most of the molecular tests are polymerase chain reaction, or what we call PCR tests. Okay, Here's how they work. The machine runs a series of reactions. These reactions first convert the virus's RNA in the sample into DNA, and then amplify it, make millions of copies of that DNA. The test can then detect that DNA. By running multiple amplification cycles, a PCR test can sense even tiny low levels of viral genetic material in a patient's sample so that these tests are highly, highly sensitive. If there are more RNA particles present, they will be detected at a lower number of cycles of amplification, meaning that the, that specimen doesn't have to be magnified as much. 
Unfortunately, the way PCR testing is reported is as a simple positive or negative result, when it should really be reported as positive at specific number of cycles of amplification. This will allow us to quantitate the result and how many cycles of amplification did the patient's test become positive is never reported. The problem with PCR testing is that it is so extremely sensitive that it can detect minuscule amounts of the RNA. Even when there is no infection or risk of infectivity present, the PCR test can be positive. Perhaps the patient inhaled one active virus RNA particle and it got caught for testing. This way of reporting PCR and calling a positive test a case has led to a gross overestimation of the prevalence of the disease. We must remember that the PCR test is not the ultimate gold standard and that its reliability must be confirmed. As early as April 27, 2020, the European Journal of Microbiology and Infectious Diseases published an article entitled viral RNA load as determined by cell culture as a management tool for discharge of SARS-CoV-2 patients from infectious disease wards. They wanted to determine if these patients were safe to discharge or if they were still infective or contagious. They demonstrated that a PCR test that is positive at 33 cycles of amplification is only 20% accurate or has an 80% false positive rate. That means that there is only a 20% chance that virus can actually be cultured from that specimen. A test that is positive at 34 or more cycles of amplification has a zero chance of being a true positive test. No virus can actually be cultured from that specimen. It has a 100% false positive rate. This diagram beautifully illustrates that as the numbers of cycles of amplification increase, the horizontal axis going from left to right, the accuracy decreases. So the vertical axis comes down. So as you go to the right, the curve is coming down. So it makes sense that reporting the exact number of cycles at which a test becomes positive is extremely useful. If we know that the test was positive at 24 cycles, then we know that the patient has an 80% chance of having a virus present. If, on the other hand, the patient is positive at 34 cycles, the patient has no chance of having virus that can actually be cultured and can actually be contagious present. So, not only is the number of amplification cycles not being reported, but the FDA and the CDC recommend that PCR tests that report positive results uh, report them up to 40 cycles of amplification. When we know that any test positive above 34 cycles is a false positive test. So this standard report will pick up many patients as having positive tests that would never culture any virus meaning this will pick up many false positive tests. In summary, the current test is set to excessively high cycles of threshold and is not quantified as to the cycle at which the patient is positive. Therefore, it is extremely prone to false positive results. The number of real cases is thus being grossly overestimated. PCR testing cannot distinguish between active and inactive viral particles. A positive test does not mean a case, which is a sick person. Positive PCR testing does not confirm that SARS-CoV-2 is the causative agent for the symptoms as it can't rule out other diseases caused by other viruses.